Which of the following is true? A, B, C, D, or is it E? So let's have you pause the video, give this question a try, and then we'll go over how to do it. Okay, let's talk about this question here. So let's look at A. 4 raised to the third power, is that equal to 4 times 3? No, 4 raised to the third power is not the same as 4 times 3, so A is out. What about B? 392 raised to the zero power. Well, anything raised to the zero power is going to be equal to 1, so B is also going to be false. So let me take B out here. So C says 4 raised to the third power equals 4 times 4 times 4, which equals 64. So C is actually the correct answer here. Now, but let's talk about D. Why is D wrong? Well, this should actually be 27, or I'm sorry, 20 raised to the negative 7. That's the same as 1 over 20 raised to the positive 7 power. So that's just an exponent rule that would be good to know for your test. So the next question says, if the temperature in the morning was 58 degrees and the temperature in the afternoon was 64 degrees, what was the difference in temperature between the afternoon and the morning? Now, if you want to challenge yourself, go ahead and try this one without a calculator. So now would be a good time to pause the video, try it out, and then we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so let's talk about this question. So what I see right off the bat is this word difference here. And the word difference is often going to be a clue that we need to subtract. In this case, I'm going to do 64 minus 58. Now, if we're going to do this without a calculator, I think that it's, it's easier if you just line the numbers up one on top of the other. Up to you if you want to do that or not, but that's how I like to do it. And I see that I'm going to go 4 minus 8, but 4 is a smaller number than 8, so I have to go next door to the 6, and I'm going to have to borrow. So I'm going to cross that 6 out, and I'm going to turn it into a 5, and I'm going to stick a 1 out here in front of the 4. So this is going to become 14. So 5 minus 5 is 0, 14 minus 8 is 6. So the correct answer here is E. Now, I have a written solution for this question that I'm going to put on the screen. You can pause the video and study it if you'd like to, uh, and then when you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. Ralph takes his family to see a movie at the theater. Ralph and his wife are both adults, and they have one son who is 7, one daughter who is 13, and another son who is 17. Ralph's 17-year-old son brings his girlfriend of the same age along. If Ralph is buying the tickets, how much money should he bring? 10 year and we have a table with ticket prices it tells us that uh, for 10 years old and under it's five dollars uh, for 10 to 15 year olds it's six for 16 and 17 year olds it's 650 and for adults 18 years and up it's 750. now the answer choices are a 38 b 25 c 14 or d 40. so now would be a good time to pause the video try this out if you'd like to then when you're ready we'll go over how to do it Okay, so to get this right, we just have to use the words and use what we're given here and write an equation. So let's just take this line by line here. So Ralph and his wife are both adults, and they have one son who is seven. So first, right off the bat, we know that there are going to be two adults uh, attending. So let me do two. Uh, let's just do two times 7.5, because for one adult, it's going to be let me use parentheses. For one adult, it's going to be 7.5, and we've got 2, so we want to do 2 times 7.5. Now, you could also do 7.5 plus 7.5. That's the same as 2 times 7.5. Okay, so we got that out of the road. Uh, now it says, and they have one son who is 7. So the son that is 7 is going to cost $5, right, based off of the chart. So I want to do plus 5. Now, we, they have one daughter who is 13, so 11 to 15 year olds at $6, since she is 13, I want to add 6. And then it says, and another son who is 17, but then it goes on to say that the son is going to bring his girlfriend of the same age along. So we've got two 17 year olds, so I'm going to do 2 times 6.5, because it tells us that the cost for 17, 16 and 17 year olds is 6.5. And again, you could do 6.5 plus 6.5 instead of doing 2 times 6.5. It's two ways of saying the same thing. So if you add all these up, you should get 39. 
And the catch here is that it's asking how much money should he bring? And so A is not gonna be enough money because he needs at least 39. So even though D is a dollar more than what he's gonna need, it's still better to have more money than not enough. So there's a little twist here to this question, um, but D is the correct answer. So hopefully you got that. And I actually don't have a written solution to this one. So hopefully this makes sense. So this video's champion shout out goes to a test taker who failed the test four different times, but persevered through tremendous adversity and finally got it done on the fifth try. Now the test taker shares that, he says, I gave up for a year, but finally I got tired of not having it. And he recommends for everyone out there to study formulas, slope, inequalities, and equations, and also shares the advice to move on and come back to harder problems when you get questions that aren't easy on your test. So congratulations. Okay, use the FOIL method to distribute the binomials 3x plus 1 uh, times x plus 7. So let's have you pause the video, give this question a shot, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so here's my little graphic uh, for the FOIL method here, and it's going to kind of guide us through this. So basically, the F in FOIL stands for first. So I want to look at my uh, first binomial here, 3x plus 1, and I see I've got 3x, and then if I look at my second over here, I see that I've got x. So I want to take the first, in each set of parentheses, I want to take the first uh, numbers here, the first terms, and I want to multiply them. So what is 3x times x? 3x times x is going to be 3x squared. So that takes care of the first. So the O stands for outer. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say here's my 3x. And I'm going to go to the outermost term in my second set of parentheses, which is 7. So 3x plus 7 is just going to be uh, 3 times 7. I'm sorry, did I say 3x plus 7? It should be 3x times 7. So 3 times 7 is 21, and we pull that x along for the right. So the outer is going to be 21x. So now I want to do the inner. So again, down here kind of guides you through what we're doing. So the inner would be the 1 times the x, and that's pretty easy. 1 times x is just x, so I'm going to just drop that x right down here. Uh, and now the last thing I have to do is, well, the last term. And again, if we look down here, it kind of guides us through what to do last on the graphic. So the last would be adding, or not adding up, multiplying the 1 and our 7. So 1 times 7 is just simply 7. So I've got 3x squared plus 21x plus x plus 7. So let me add this x up, and if I do that, I'll get 3x squared uh, plus 22x plus 7, which corresponds to answer choice A. So if you had trouble with this, let me show you the written solution. I'm showing the written solution up on the screen for you now. You can take all the time you need to pause the video. Then when you're ready, we'll, you can go on to the next question. Okay, so this question says, answer without a calculator. The square root of 32 equals what? Is it 4 square root of 2, 2 square root of 2, 4, 4 square root of 6, or E, none of the above? And so this question is, I would say this is a, a really hard question here. Uh, so I've given you a list of common square roots. Um, now, you absolutely won't be given this out on your test. Uh, so if you have extra time, you'll definitely want to uh, memorize these values here. Not everyone's going to have time to do that, but it wouldn't hurt to. Um, and so let's have you pause the video and try to figure this out. And you can use this list for right now since we're just practicing. Okay, so to do this without a calculator, we've got the square root of 32. And I want to basically break this 32 down into numbers that will multiply together to give us the square root of 32. And hopefully we can find some of those numbers here on our common square roots list. So the square root of 32, or I should say 32, is equal to 4 times 8. All right. And we can even break this down further because 8 is equal to 4 times 2. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times 4 times 2. So hopefully you follow that so far. So all I did, I saw that I had 32, and I realized that 32 is the same as 4 times 8, because 4 times 8 equals 32. So once I had this 4 times 8, 
I realized that 4 times 8 is really the same as 4 times 4 times 2. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. That's a little bit tricky. All right, and now what I can do is I want to look over here at my list of common square roots. And what's going to help me out is the fact that the square root of 4 equals 2. So I've got the square root of 4 times 4 times 2. Uh, so 4 has a common square root of 2, so I can actually move that outside here, right? So I can rewrite square root of 4 as 2. Same with this 4 right here. The square root of this 4 is also going to be 2. So I can do 2 times 2, all right, multiplied by the square root of 2. So hopefully you see how I did this. All I did was I've got the square root of 4 times 4 times 2, and the square root of 4 is 2, so I pulled, I turned this square root of 4 right here into a 2 and pulled it outside of the square root symbol, and I did the same with this 4 right here. All right, since this 4 is under the square root, and I know that the square root of 4 is 2, I just pulled, I turned that square root of 4 into a 2. All right, so it's going to look like 2 times 2 times the square root of 2. And 2 times 2 is just 4, which leaves me with 4 square root of 2. All right, so this is a hard question here. This is kind of complicated. All right, so don't sweat it too much if you didn't understand this, but square roots are fair game for your test. So let me show you the written solution, and then we'll move on to the next question. And you can pause the video, take all the time you need. All right, so 60, 35 raised to the 1 over 5 equals what? Is it A, we've got a little 5 out up here and square root of 35. We've got B, we've got a little 1 over 5 and then square root of 35. We've got C, is it 35? Or is it D, 1 over 35 raised to the negative 1 over 5? All right, so this is negative 1 over 5. This out here is a little 1 over 5. This right here is a little five. So I apologize, I know these numbers are probably really small, that's why I'm reading them out loud. So pause the video, try your best with this question, and then when you're ready, we'll go over how to do it. Okay, so the correct answer here is E. So let me break this down for you here. So 35 raised to the one over five is in fact equal to one over 35 raised to the negative 1 over 5. Okay, so this is just a general exponent rule. I think we looked at something really similar to this earlier on on the test here. And also, A is also correct. So 35 raised to the 1 over 5 is also equal to a little 5 out here in square root of 35. All right, so these are just two general rules that you'll want to remember. So let me just write these rules out for you on the screen. So I've tried to make these both as big as I possibly can on the screen here. I realize this might be hard to see, especially if you're on like a mobile device here. Um, but if you got this question wrong, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just make sure that you know these two rules here. All right, it's a little tricky, but this could be fair game on your test. Answer without using a calculator. 44 minus 27 equals what? So let's have you pause the video, try this out, and then we'll go over it whenever you're ready. So for questions like this, my preference is to rewrite them so that I've got the numbers stacked one on top of the other. Totally up to you if you want to do it that way or not. Um, but basically, 4 minus 7, well, 4 is smaller than 7. So I want to go next door to the neighbor, and I want to borrow. So I'm going to cross this 4 out, and I'm going to turn it into a 3. And then I'm going to stick a 1 out here. So this is going to become a 14. So 14 minus 7 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1, so the answer is A17. And I'll put the written solution up on the screen, and you can take your time and study it, and then when you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll keep rolling. So the next question says, calculate the volume of a sphere with a radius of 3 meters. Is it A, B, C, D, or E? Now, I've given you the formula for the volume of a sphere. On the test, you'll have to look this up on the formula sheet. You don't have to memorize it, but you will have to look it up on the sheet on your test. But it says volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's have you pause the video, try the calculation, and when you're ready, we'll go over how to do this. Okay, so basically here, what I want to do is I'm just going to do the calculation. So let me set it up for you. I've got 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, and we know that r is 3. Uh, now, r cubed, if it's 3 cubed, that's the same as 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, 
So if I put this in my calculator, I get 36 pi. And you might be wondering, on the test, are they going to leave pi in the answer choices, or is it going to be 36 uh, and you're going to have to multiply it by 3.14? Well, the answer is that it's just going to depend on your test, so uh, you, be prepared to see it both ways. Uh, basically, this number pi here, it's, it's just a number that is approximately equal to 3.14. All right, now it's not equal to 3.14. But just for the purposes of the test, just remember that pi is 3.14. All right, and so you might, if you, you might just see the answer like this, 36 times pi, but you also might see it, let me do that in my calculator, 36 times 3.14. So you also might see something like this, all right, 113.04 or whatever as an answer choice too. All right, so just remember, you know, if it's something like this, you might just see pi left in the answer choice, but if not, just multiply your answer by 3.14. So let me show you how the calculation on the screen. The next question is, what is the x-intercept of the line y equals negative 1x plus 2? A, B, C, D, or E? So let's have you pause the video, give this one a shot. If you get it wrong, don't worry, we're just here to learn. Okay, so let's talk about how to do this question. Hopefully you had a chance to try it out. So you should know that the x-intercept is always, it's going to be the place wherever the line crosses the x-axis. So this axis right here is our x-axis. The x-axis goes left and right, and the y-axis goes up and down. So this right here would be our y-axis. And so there's two ways to do this question, and the harder way would be to take this equation here and to plug a zero in for y and then solve the equation for x. In other words, to put a zero in for y and then try to get x by itself on one side of the equation. That's the slightly harder way to do it. Um, but the easy way is to just look at the graph and we see that the graph is going to cross the x-axis where uh, x equals two. All right, so again, if I just follow this line right here, I see that the x intercept is 2. So this is actually a pretty important written solution to read, so definitely take your time and study this. Uh, pause the video and take your time with this.